great crowd, love it. <laughs> we know, I mean, you've got to admit, I like these vaccine mandates. <laughs> sure, for the health reasons, whatever. I just feel like it halves the chance of me being called a faggot out here. So, <laughs> I think we should keep them. I think, I think we should keep them. Actually, I don't mind being called a faggot. <laughs> just in the bedroom, though. <laughs> Please. <laughs> You probably all worked it out. I'm obviously a middle child. <laughs> Any other middle children in? Make some noise. Okay, don't get too desperate. Your parents aren't here. They're not going to notice you tonight. I'm actually number three out of four kids. And I've got a theory here. Okay, follow me on this. <laughs> <laughs> the vaccine, no, no, no. <laughs> I feel like the third one is always the gay one in the family. Okay, anyone agree? Anyone in, no? Is there anyone here that's the third in their family? And they're gay? You're gay? No, okay. <laughs> cut the cameras, cut the cameras. No one saw that. <laughs> Get him out. <laughs> no, you're welcome here. Okay, well, hear me out. Here's my theory. So the, <laughs> the first one is the worst one. Yes, yes, and if you're, if you're like, no, then you're the first and all your siblings are so fed up with you because the parents don't know what they're doing with that one, right? They're like making it up. <laughs> that one's a complete experiment. They never let the kid out of their sight. The kid's so codependent on their parents. They never pay their taxes, never reply in the family WhatsApp thread. You know, they're never buying family presents for birthdays. Total liability, complete write-off. <laughs> the second one is the best one. Yeah, of course you're all clapping for yourselves, smug pricks. Um, because the parents have worked out how they screwed the first one up. You know, they're like, whoa, won't make the same mistakes on that second one. No, we'll send them to a proper school, not a Steiner school. You know, we'll give them a real education. Now, Steiner's made lots of wonderful artists. <laughs> not a lot of accountants though, right? So that, that kid, you know, that grows up to be really responsible. They're like doctors and lawyers and they, you know, remind everyone about the family holiday trip. They're replying, they're organising everything. Probably bought the tickets for tonight <laughs> for their elder sibling. And then the third one I feel like is the gay one. Because <laughs> the parents like, fucking nailed it on that second one. Oh, let's just let that third one go. I don't give a shit what that one's up to. Off they go. They're like, oh God, where's the third one gone? I've lost it. Has anyone, where's the, has anyone seen the third kid? I'll tell you where they are. They're walking through David Jones <laughs> to the men's underwear department <laughs> to stare at all the models posing in their underwear on the packets, thinking, I like that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Back again, Chris. <laughs> Fourth time this week. <laughs> and then the fourth one um, is a mistake. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry if you're here. <laughs> you're not supposed to be. <laughs> but I bore the brunt of all the sibling rivalry for a really long time because I was um, the youngest. Isn't it crazy growing up with siblings? Who grew up with siblings here? Yeah, <laughs> you're all putting your hands up like you're in some sort of <laughs> siblings anonymous group, yeah. If you look back at that time and thought, what the fuck was that? It's like 18 years of physical and mental warfare. You know, you wake up every morning on high alert, waiting for a spring attack from your brother who's been hiding in the cupboard all night, ready to kick you in the nuts, eating dinner with your eyes wide open, making sure no one spits in your two minute noodles. You know, because you study your siblings, don't you? You try and work them out. Waiting for a moment where you, you've been left in a car together and your mum's like, right, I'll be 15 minutes, I'm going to the supermarket. Be kind to one another, all right? It's like the fucking Hunger Games are on. <laughs> it's 35 degrees in the car, no one's cracked a window. Someone's gonna slit someone's throat in there. So yeah, my sister was born um, <laughs> six years after me because she is a miracle, as mum put it. <laughs> Mistake. Uh, <laughs> Which means my siblings used to pick on me the most. My brother was more of like the physical stuff, you know, your, um, what are, you know, your Charlie horses that were the Latino and the um, sack taps, you know those? <laughs> yeah, yeah, mate, just dudes being dudes, just tapping each other's sacks, nothing fucking gay about that, mate. Oh, bam! Oh, bam! Oh, my balls! Oh! Oh, but when I do it, oh, I'm a bloody homo! <laughs> But I've actually worked out, guys, it's the direction of the wrist on that one. 
Yeah, so write this down, write this down. <laughs> Straight gay. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Not on your brother. Um, whereas my sister was more of the mind games, you know? She was trying to sort of break me down <laughs> from the inside. I mean, that's how sisters work, right? I will, okay, <laughs> just between us, uh, because we're getting along. I will preface this story by saying, despite being like very cute and innocent out here, I did have like a minor biting habit as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> like in the way that we all used to give each other a wee chomp back in the day. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, just me. I was, uh, kind of did get to the point where there was like a star chart system <laughs> that would reward me for not biting another human. You know when you say something out loud and you start thinking, who am I? <laughs> it was like, Monday, no bites, gold star. Tuesday, no bites, gold star. If I got to the end of the week, I got a present and I don't know what that's taught me. But sometimes, you know, I'd just be like, fuck the stars, I want a bite. Get out there, no, 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 no. Get my teeth wet. And I guess on one occasion, I guess I bit my sister just like one too many times that day. My mum's fully fed up with me. She's like, Chris, if you bite your sister one more time, I'll, I'll bite you. So, my sister, being the evil genius that she is, bit herself, <laughs> and my mum fucking bit me. <laughs> I don't blame her. That's the kind of 90s parenting I'm into. Give them a bite, they deserve it. It's the kind of parent I'm gonna be to my adopted Bichon Freeze, just <laughs> running around chasing it, trying to give it a bite. I do worry that that biting kid is still in me somewhere. <laughs> you look worried like I'm coming for you. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm chained up up here. I can't get you here. You look good though. No, uh, <laughs> I feel that's, that body could flare up every now and then. Um, like, never more so than trying to put together one of those wire clothes horses you buy from Kmart. You know those little white cheapies you buy? To, they make me irate. <laughs> Because the design of them, you've got to bend them wider, you know, to get them on those outy hooky bits. The bits that rust and get you in the leg and you're like, I think I've got tetanus now. So you bend that side up and then you go over to do this side and this side's already like, bing, you know, in a million different directions. So you're bending it all together, soldering it all back together because it was never built properly in the first place. You finally balance all your disgusting little sockets over it. And then you realise it's in the wrong room of the house. And then you have to do this walk. Trying to back it into a trailer, like, you know, the door like you're backing in a trailer. Out I go, I want to go start biting. Anyway, thank you so much. I've been Chris Parker. Good night.